Let's work on solving log equations. There are two main types of log equations you'll see. Some of them have one log and some of them have two logs. So one log means you can condense everything, but then there's still one log on one side of your equal sign. And then there's two logs, that means one is on each side and you can just take them away. But when you have one log, you have to rewrite it in exponential form and then solve it from there to get rid of the log. And for two logs, you can just take them away, like I said, and solve what's left. So we're gonna look at some examples. But in these equations, you do have to check for extraneous solutions because you can't take the log of a negative number. So you have to check to make sure your solution doesn't make it so that in the original equation, you were taking the log or the natural log of a negative number. So let's try some examples. On the first board, I just have the simple ones where you have one log or one natural log and you've got to rewrite it and solve. So if I have log base four of x equals three halves, I would have to first rewrite it in exponential form. So I would have four to the three halves power is equal to x. You could type that in the calculator or work it out by hand and you should just get that x is equal to eight. When you plug eight back in, you're not taking the log of a negative, so it would be fine. That's all you're checking for when you check your solution. For number two, I have log base three of x plus one equals two. So first let's rewrite it without the log. So three squared is equal to x plus one. So nine is equal to three squared. If nine is x plus one, then x would just equal eight again. And that's just by coincidence that they both equal eight. So if I check my eight, 8 plus 1 is 9, so I'm not taking the log of a negative back in that original problem. That's all you're checking for, so that one looks fine. For number 3, you have the natural log of 4x equals 3. So we have to remember that natural log has an understood base of e. e is the anti-natural log, and it's the button in your calculator that's second and then natural log to get that little e to show up. So you do e to the third power is equal to 4x. So I've calculated that already. e to the third power is equal to 20.09. So I'm gonna put 20.09 equals 4x. Then you have to divide by four and you get 5.02 equals x. So we do get a decimal sometimes. If I check my answer, I just need to make sure that that would not make me take the natural log of a negative and it should be fine because it's positive and times four would still be positive. So for the last example, again, natural log has an understood base of E. So if it's not there, you can write it in. And log has an understood base of 10. So if there's not a base, you understand that it's 10 and then you rewrite it with 10 as your base. All right, so let's rewrite this one as E to the first power is equal to x minus six. So e to the first power I calculated was 2.72, and that equals x minus six. So I just need to add six to both sides, and I get 8.72 is my solution. So I just need to check, would that make me take the natural, natural log or log of a negative? And no, because 8.72 minus six would still be positive. Let's look at some more examples. So on the next slide, I have two basic examples of where you have log on both sides. These don't take me long to show you what to do and you could definitely go from there. So log base eight of three X plus seven equals log base eight of seven X plus four. If you have log on both sides, you can just take them away and solve what's left, which is just a linear equation. So 3x plus 7 would equal 7x plus 4. So you can definitely solve that just like you would any other linear equation. Subtract 3x from both sides to put your x's together. So 7 equals 4x plus 4. So if I subtract 4, I would get 3 equals 4x. And if I divide by 4, I get x equals 3 fourths. You still want to check and make sure that that would not give you a negative. Three fourths is positive, so three times something positive plus seven would definitely not be negative. And seven times something positive plus four, again, would not be negative. So we're fine with three fourths. 
Let's look at the next one. So you have log base 12 on both sides. You are allowed to just take those away when that happens and bring down what's left. So then you solve the linear equation, and it could be quadratic that's left over, so it's not always linear, but I'm just showing you these two so you get the idea. So negative 9 equals 2x minus 13, and we can add 13. So 4 equals 2x, and when you divide by 2, you get x equals 2. If x were equal to 2, you check that. 2 minus 9 right there would be negative 7, so that is no good. So if it's not equal to 2, this one would have no solution. And if they asked you what is the extraneous solution, you tell them x equals 2 is extraneous. All right, I just had two more I want to show you, and you'll see why. We've looked at properties of logs. What if they give you an equation that has more than two logs? What do you do? You've got to use your log properties to rewrite it in condensed form, and then you'll have one or two logs left. You'll never end up with more than that if you put everything together properly. And then you can solve the equation that's left. So I just wrote down two examples of where this might happen, where we'll end up with one log for one and two logs for the other, and I'll show you what happens. So number one, we're going to put these together using our properties. So they were adding... That's the product property. We need to multiply. So we rewrite We rewrite the left side in one log. Log base 8 of n minus 3 times n plus 4, all in one log expression, is still equal to just 1. So notice I don't have two logs. You can't just take log away. I know once you see that type of log equation, it's easy to try to do that every time, but you can't just take log away if there's not another one over here. So we still have to rewrite this one in exponential form. So 8 to the first power is equal to all of that. So like we've done before, we got to FOIL this out. So n squared plus n minus 12 equals 8. You want to get everything on one side because you can tell that it's quadratic. So now you're going to want to factor or use quadratic formula if you had to, but most of these should be factorable. So then we factor out this trinomial. We get n plus 5, n minus 4. So n could equal negative 5 and 4, but you want to check and make sure they would both make sense with your original problem. So if you plug in negative 5 for n, that would be negative 5 minus 3. That would be negative. So negative 5 is extraneous. If you pl plug in, excuse me, if you plug in 4, you got 4 minus 3, which is still positive, and 4 plus 4 would be 8, which is positive. So n equals 4 is your solution. n equals negative 5 was extraneous. I'm going to write that out because some of us have struggled with that idea. So I'm going to write that right there. N, N equals negative 5 would be extraneous. It does not work, even though it looks good. So number 2, you've got to put all these logs together on this side and these logs together on this side and then see what you could do. So log base 6 of 3m plus 7 minus log base 6 of m plus 4. Minus is the quotient property, so we divide when we're subtracting. So that's that side. I put it all together as log base 6 of 3m plus 7 divided by m plus 4. Now over here we have some powers out front, so you want to move that 2 to the back. And this one was, I think that was a big 6 right there. I just left that out because we do need a big number right there. So that would be log of 6 squared now. So we put I'm going to write it in two steps. Log base 6 of 6 squared minus, and then we need to move the 3 back to this 3 as an exponent, minus log base 6 of 3 cubed. So 
but then we still need to put these together. They're subtracting, so we need to divide. So we have this side all put together. We need to say, I'm just going to write it again, log of log base 6 of 3m plus 7 over m plus 4 is equal to log base 6 of 6 squared would be 36 divided by 27 because 3 cubed is 27. And see now that you've condensed both sides, you do have log base 6 on both sides. So now it's okay to take them away. And then what's left over is a rational expression equal to another rational expression. So we're allowed to cross multiply to finish solving. But I could reduce this right here to start off and not have such big numbers. So 36 and 27 both divide evenly by 9. So let's put 4 over 3. And then we're going to cross multiply. So 4 times m plus 4 is equal to 3 times 3m plus 7. And then we just need to solve the linear equation that's left. So 4m plus 16 equals 9m plus 21. If I subtract 4m, I get 5m. And if I subtract 21, I get negative 5. So then we could divide by 5, and m would equal negative 1. So I still need to check back with the original problem. If m were negative 1, would that be okay? 3 times negative 1 would be negative 3. But negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4, so that's okay there. Negative 1 plus 4 is still positive 3. And you don't have any variables on this side to worry about.